And now we welcome our mayor, Ron Nirenberg. It's not really a fight. <laughs> well, good afternoon. And Mr. Speaker, Joe, thank you for the kind introduction. I think we can all agree few leaders in San Antonio have met, and Bear County have made such an indelible mark on our community in this great state of Texas. And we sure do miss you up in Austin, Joe. Let's give him another round of applause. Thank you to my city council colleagues who are here today. Over the past two years, we've made significant strides for every person, every family, every part of our city to prosper. Thank you for the work that you do every day on behalf of our city. And I'd like to recognize, of course, our new city manager, Eric Walsh. Eric. I hope you've gotten to know Eric. He is a fantastic individual and he's dedicated his entire career to improving the city he loves. And Eric leads a top-notch executive team. Our city staff is the most professional, effective municipal organization in the nation. And this team remains committed to prudent, responsible fiscal stewardship of our tax dollars. And I know that County Judge Nelson Wolf is here. Nelson, thank you for your invaluable leadership and your partnership on all these extraordinary issues that we face. And I especially want to thank Erica Prosper, my wife and partner and immediate past chair of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. I love you. I wouldn't be here without you. And you all should know that everything that we do is for our son Jonah and to ensure that the next generation inherits an even better San Antonio. And of course, I want to thank the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce, the Hispanic Chamber, the Alamo City Black Chamber, and the Alamo Asian Chamber for hosting this united State of the City Address. I'm very grateful for our business community and our civic leaders coming together. The folks in this room represent Team SA. You understand that the way we do business in this city is through partnership and collaboration. Our city has a unique culture. We work together as one community and one team. We're not flashy or loud. We're quietly focused on real results, kind of like our silver and black, our San Antonio Spurs. Once again, for the 22nd consecutive season, our beloved Spurs are in the NBA playoffs. Even when some had counted them out, death, taxes, and the Spurs in the postseason. The Spurs' continued excellence is not only a testament to Coach Pop's leadership, even though he's the best in the business, it's not only due to the dominance of players like Tim Duncan, although the big fundamental was a major part, the Spurs continue to win because they work not only as individuals, but as one team towards a shared goal. Like the Spurs, our city, Team SA, prospers because we work together as a city, a united community with a common purpose. Every person in our community, every company in these chambers of commerce, every sector in the local economy contributes to our city's progress and advances San Antonio's prosperity. And as mayor, my job is to create the environment for this work to flourish, to promote policies for our entire city to prosper, and to build the foundation for our future. But it takes Team SA, everyone in this room, working together the private sector, the public sector, and the people of San Antonio. So today, I'm proud to report that our city is stronger than ever. More, more than 40,000 new jobs in the last two years, unemployment below the Texas and the national average, wages rising and more people working in higher income jobs, ranked fourth out of the top 100 metros for economic growth. We're growing as a top destination for millennials and the workforce of the future. We're the best community for veterans and boomers to work and retire. And we're one of the most attractive places to raise a family and to start a business. 
No one would argue that San Antonio is perfect, but I think everyone would agree that Team SA has put our city on the right track. We're working together on a single mission, and that is to create high-paying jobs in the strongest, most equitable economy in the country. We're focused on building industries of the future, cybersecurity, information technology, bioscience and healthcare, aerospace and advanced manufacturing. And we're off to a fantastic start in 2019. PenFed, a national credit union, is creating 600 high wage jobs as part of a new regional hub right here. Victory Capital, a 100 year old publicly traded global investment firm, is moving their entire corporate headquarters here from Cleveland, Ohio, along with hundreds of jobs paying an average salary of $96,000. Accenture Federal Services, which already employs 1,300 people here, is adding 500 more good paying jobs because of growing demand for their services and our talent. These are just a few recent wins out of many economic development successes in recent months. So I want to thank Jenna Saceda Herrera, President and CEO of the San Antonio Economic Development Foundation for your leadership on Team SA and also Renee Dominguez from our very own city of San Antonio for all of their hard work. All of these CEOs, these teams, are choosing San Antonio for our diversity, our workforce, and our quality of life. And that culture centers on a team-oriented service mindset that is best shaped by our military members and their families. This is the quiet, humble strength that unites us around our common purpose. So I'd like to recognize the leaders of Military City USA who are with us today. Lieutenant General Jeffrey Buchanan, Brigadier General Laura Lenderman, Rear Admiral Tina Davidson, Brigadier General George Appenzeller, Mr. Bob Nathan, Chief Master Sergeant Juliet Cudgel, Command Master Chief Richard J. Putnam, and our very own Master Ge Major General Juan Ayala. Let's give them a round of applause. And let's also show our gratitude to the military leaders, our veterans, the men and women in uniform, as well as the children who also make the sacrifice. Thank you all for your contributions to our city and for your service to our nation. In military innovation, San Antonio has always been on the cutting edge. And that innovation sparks new industries. The first military flight took off right from right here at Fort San Antonio, for, excuse me, Fort Sam Houston. Now Port San Antonio is rising, home of the maintenance of Air Force One, half a dozen aerospace companies like Boeing, more than 70 organizations, and 12,000 great jobs. And Brooks, is at the epicenter of an economic boom on the south side, with 40 businesses from around the world and 3,000 well-paying jobs. Teamwork and our military foundation have made San Antonio a center of advanced manufacturing, now our number one industry. And it's the home of military medicine. The first routine chest x-rays in the military started right here. And in the last 150 years, the Brook Army Medical Center went from a single-story wooden facility to the Army's premier medical institution. And now, the bioscience health industry in San Antonio employs one out of every six residents and has a $48 billion economic impact, about a third of our GDP. That military foundation is why San Antonio is also now a city of health and a city of science. But the most extraordinary transformation is happening right here, right now, right before our eyes, with cybersecurity. We're home to the Air Force Cyber Command, the NSA, and over 40 cyber companies mostly clustered around the defense industry. Texas A&M San Antonio launched a cyber program by partnering with the world's leading social media platform. And we have more cyber assets than any metro area outside of Washington, D.C. But our vision is a lot bigger than that. We're Cyber City USA, 
and we will be the hub for international security and defense, business, and academia. And Team SA is what's making it happen. UTSA is expanding downtown with a new school of data science, and it will be the home of the first ever National Security Collaboration Center. You see, we're all on the same team, the city, the county, and the state, and all of the public and private partners that are making it happen. The economic momentum is in our favor, and we have to continue our march forward. In my first term as your mayor, over the last two years, we have worked together to build a solid foundation for the future. Over the last two years, we've bolstered our big fundamentals, public safety, community health, infrastructure, transportation, housing, and workforce development. These investments are the foundation of a strong economy and the fuel for one of the best futures in the United States. These are the fundamentals. We must be a secure city where people feel safe from crime. And last year, there was a 16% reduction in serious crime. San Antonio's crime rate has gone from a 25-year high to its lowest level in three decades. This improvement This improvement is thanks to our efforts of our police officers, our detectives, the Violent Crime Task Force, and of course, our great police chief, William McManus. And I know, Chief, you're here somewhere. Let's give him a round of applause. But we're not done. We'll remain vigilant, especially as we get laser focused on drunk driving, on child abuse, and on domestic violence. We're working together with community organizations, faith groups, service providers, and law enforcement as one team to end the scourge of intimate partner violence. We must. Fundamentals. We must also be a healthy city. Team SA is building a culture of health and a city of wellness. For instance, we implemented Tobacco 21, raising the tobacco age to 21 years old here in our city to stop addiction before it starts. And now, the Texas Legislature is pushing our city ordinance statewide. We're, we're also leading in a global effort to eradicate HIV and AIDS, which are increasing in many cities like ours. And partnering with Judge Wolf in Bear County, we're working to prevent opioid addiction and the loss of life, which has become a crisis in so many cities throughout the country. Dr. Colleen Bridger, our former health director, is now assistant city manager, and she's leading an effort also around adverse childhood experiences. Abuse, neglect, and poverty all affect a child's development, which has negative ripple effects throughout our community. Our service providers, our first responders, all need the knowledge and training to deliver trauma-informed care to our city's most vulnerable residents. Doing so will strengthen our foundation for the future, and we will, we will rally around the cause. Fundamentals. We must be a water secure and energy certain city. And on that, we are strong. Look at the San Antonio water system. As the Texas population booms and our climate changes, water is increasingly a precious commodity. The communities with affordable, diverse sources of water have major economic advantage in the future, and it's already happening. After all the apple whites, endangered species lawsuits, and failed projects, I'm proud as a resident, and I'm proud as a SAWS board member, we've advanced from one source of water, the Edwards Aquifer in the 1990s, to a diversified portfolio of dependable sources. This is thanks to leaders past and present like President and CEO of SAWS, Robert Puente. SAWS is now also a national leader in water conservation. Consider this. We use the same amount of water as a community today as we did in 1992. We've reduced our per-person water use, saving you money and saving us all water for the future. And what this means for San Antonio in the future is that the question of water security has been answered. This is an economic advantage over every other major city in Texas and most cities in the country. And our energy utility has been, is, 
and must remain professionally and thoughtfully managed as well. CPS Energy is owned by the people of San Antonio. We manage our, our energy supply as a team to our advantage because CPS Energy is also the backbone of the entire Texas energy grid. We're able to leverage this as a resource to attract companies, to protect our own consumers, and to make strategic investments. And we've already demonstrated how it's done with the new energy economy partnerships. We are the top solar producer in Texas and seventh nationwide. And due to visionary leadership, we created a 21st century industry and more than 1,000 solar jobs here in San Antonio. So SA Climate Ready, for all the debate, is another economic opportunity. Managing through climate change is a serious challenge for every city and every business in the world. So Team SA will be prepared for the future. The data is clear. San Antonio will be hotter, will be drier, and will experience more severe storms. That poses a real financial risk to our collective future if we fail to take action and to adapt. Inaction means higher energy bills that disproportionately impact residents with lower incomes. Inaction means less time for children and older residents to be outside, higher rates of asthma and diabetes for an already at-risk community. Inaction means billions of dollars of public infrastructure and private property is at risk. So we'll go forward together to harness the creativity, the ingenuity, and the grit of this city to prepare for our future. We are Team SA, and we are part of a global coalition of cities and local leaders working to make positive change for our economy and for our climate. I want to applaud the leadership of President and CEO Paula Gold Williams and the thoughtful approach of CPS Energy's flexible path. As we move from planning to implementation of SA Climate Ready, we'll conduct a full cost-benefit analysis of every strategy and continue to support economic growth as we protect a sustainable environment. Done prudently, done pragmatically, this will prepare us for climate change and there will be economic boon for our city. So thank you to our chamber and our business leaders for your productive engagement on this issue. Fundamentals. We must be a city with a sustainable supply of affordable housing. As mayor, my top priority is for fostering prosperity for the people of San Antonio, and no issue affects that more than housing. Like in so many of America's leading cities, the average San Antonio family cannot afford the average San Antonio home. Over the last two decades, housing prices and rents have skyrocketed, and wages have failed to keep pace. One in three San Antonio families is burdened by housing costs, and it's even worse for renters. The challenge not only affects individual families, but our entire economy. And this challenge can quickly become insurmountable, insurmountable, like so many other cities, if we don't act. So when I became mayor, we took action. In 2018, we adopted the Mayor's Housing Policy Task Force report, and now, we have a 10-year strategy to enable the market to increase the supply of affordable housing. Now, we're coordinating housing systems in the public sector to reduce time and cost. We're facilitating the private sector with direct and indirect investment. And we're revitalizing communities while also preventing displacement. Progress is already underway. We can see it. And this will be a solid foundation for our housing future. Last year, we had almost 12,000 housing starts. The news is even better this year, which was a 6% increase from 2017. We're also on track for more than 7,000 new units of housing in the urban core that would never have been built without city support and private partnerships. The vibrancy of downtown San Antonio is one of our greatest achievements over the last decade, and it will continue. To be competitive in this 21st century economy, cities need livable, vibrant urban living, and Team SA needs your support. So to all of you here in the room today, to developers, business owners, home builders, and the audience, we only succeed with your support and investment in our city and its people. So let's work together to lower the cost of building and expand the supply of affordable housing. 
fundamentals. We must also be a city with modern, efficient transportation. As mayor, I've made an unprecedented commitment with my colleagues to basic street maintenance. We've doubled our funding for roads to reduce congestion and keep up with population growth. But we all know that's not enough. Traffic continues to stall our commutes, and it risks slowing our entire economy. San Antonio's population, because we're so popular, is growing by 66 people per day. By 2040, commuters are expected to spend an extra seven days stuck in traffic every single year. That's unacceptable for quality of life, and it's debilitating for our economy. So last year, right here, I announced the creation of Connect SA. This nonprofit, which is focused on the most innovative transportation plan in our city's history to be on your ballot next year, is led by Tri-Chairs Henry Cisneros, Jane Macon, and Hope Andrade. I'd like to recognize them and the VIA team, led by CEO Jeff Arndt, for all of their great hard work. <laughs> Through Connect SA, we've developed a framework for modern mobility that builds upon past efforts that are in SA 2020, SA Tomorrow, VIA 2040, the Master Sidewalk and the Linear Creekway plans. Team SA is all at the table, together, the MPO, TxDOT, SAMCO, the county, and the city. Never before have all of these ideas and partners been integrated into one single comprehensive strategy for modern mobility. And the centerpiece of that strategy is an advanced rapid transit system, the first in our city's history, a network of dedicated lanes where trackless vehicles move people more efficiently, mass transit. An ART system yields the highest return on investment with transit-oriented development along the route and enough flexibility to prepare for our future. The Connect SA framework integrates all of these modes for modern mobility. San Antonio needs complete streets. We need 200 more miles of sidewalks to close the gap. We need to make Vision Zero a reality to reduce fatalities. We need to become a safer city for pedestrians and cyclists. We need 40 miles of protected lanes for bikes and for micromobility. This is the strength of Connect SA, ties it all together. And over the coming months, we're seeking feedback on the Connect SA framework to build a foundation for future mobility. Our Connect SA mobility plan will be data informed, results oriented, and citizen driven. And then we'll take it to voters next year to get their seal of approval, and then we'll get to work. Smart investments in transit translate into economic development, job creation, improved public safety, and a higher quality of life. But finally, fundamentals. And this is the one that we should be most excited about. We must be a city with smart and skilled workforce. By 2020, two out of every three new jobs will require some form of higher education, a certificate, an apprenticeship, or a two or four year degree. Fortunately, San Antonio is a leader already on workforce development. From Project Quest to SA Works, San Antonio residents can receive job training and technical skills to thrive. But now it's time to change the game. It's time to be bolder. It's time to think bigger. It's time to think about the future, and it's time to fulfill the Alamo promise. The Alamo promise is simple. No matter their circumstances, every student Every student in Bear County should be free to pursue their full potential. And when, we, when they do, we all benefit. And in the 21st century, this promise requires an advanced degree or skills training. It's time to remove barriers to higher education with tuition-free community college for all qualifying students in Bear County. <laughs> this investment which is minimal compared to so many other things we do as a community. We'll leverage federal funding, public-private partnerships, and a last dollar scholarship to cover the cost of tuition at the Alamo Community Colleges District, which was recently named in the top 1% of all institutions nationwide. The Alamo Promise is not only a smart investment in San Antonio's economy and our future, but it is a moonshot to reduce generational poverty and increase social mobility. 
So I want to, I want to join you in saying thank you to Chancellor Mike Flores for his sense of urgency and his leadership on this issue. In the coming months, we'll be recruiting you to be our industry partners. We need your expertise and knowledge of the skills in a modern workforce, and then we'll need you to hire our very talented and capable, capable Alamo Promise graduates. This collaboration, which is the public sector, the private sector, and the people of San Antonio working together, is Team SA in action. With the Alamo Promise, we will realize the full economic potential of our entire city, and then we will truly be a top 10 city. We have all of the momentum in our favor. We're stronger and safer than we have ever been before. We are standing in San Antonio on a solid foundation for the future. And I would say, if you were to choose any time in our 301 years of history to live in San Antonio, you'd pick right now. In a little over six years, when I hopefully ser serve my last term as your mayor, my son Jonah will be graduating from high school. He'll have his whole life ahead of him, and he'll have to decide where he wants to pursue his future. My challenge, our collective work, is to build a city that he can be proud of, a place that enables him and everyone else to discover what makes them happy. So we're moving forward, together. We're united around a common purpose. We're attracting innovative companies as we support high-paying jobs. We're expanding prosperity as we advance equity. We're building affordable housing as we reduce traffic congestion. We're investing in the fundamentals as we prepare for our bright future. San Antonio has a solid foundation for prosperity. Now, it's on us. Let's keep building the city you deserve. Thank you, and viva San Antonio.